Okay, our topic for today is Markov chains. And uh, to uh, get us going on that, uh, we'll look at a, a small example. So let's suppose uh, in a uh, given urban area, uh, each year 5% of the population that's in the city moves to the suburbs, and 3% of the suburban population moves to the city. And we're going to assume that this is a closed uh, uh, system here, so uh, any movement uh, just goes from the city to the suburbs or suburbs to the city. So we're not uh, considering moving elsewhere or people moving in from elsewhere. So just city to suburban, suburban to city. Okay, so let's assume that the current city population is 600,000 and the current suburban population is 400,000. Then what will the population of each be a year from now? Well, um, based on what we know, uh, next year uh, the city population is going to be 95% uh, of what it is now, right? Because we each year 5% leave, so we're keeping 95%. And then 3% of the suburban population moves to the city. So we add on uh, 0.03 times the current suburban population. So that's uh, 0.95 times 600,000 plus 0.03 times 400,000, which gives us 582,000. So it makes sense that the city population is going down. So we've got more moving to the suburbs than we have coming in. Uh, to find the suburban population in a year, uh, we could just say, well, um, since the total is a million, then we can just say a million minus 582,000 and uh, get it that way, which is correct. But we could also look at it the way we did with the city and say, well, we're getting 5% of the city population moving to the suburbs, and 97% uh, of the current suburban population is staying there. So we get 0.05 times 600,000 plus 0.97 times 400,000, which gives us 418,000. And uh, 418 plus 582 uh, gives a million total. Um, another way to look at it is, uh, let's look, take a closer look at those equations. Um, and notice that we've got um, 600,000 times the 0 0.95, 0 0.05 here and we got the 400,000 times the 0 0.03 and the 0.97 and that looks like hmm, we're taking a linear combination of a couple of vectors the 0.95 the 0 0.05 and the 0 0.03 0 0.97 so we're going to rewrite it in this form as a matrix times a vector right and so the linear combination is just 600,000 times the first column plus 400,000 times the second column and that gives us our uh, population figures for one year from now you can also look at it, at it as percentages, which is typical um, instead of actual raw uh, numbers. Uh, so if we look at the population vector as 0 0.6, 0 0.4, um, we do the same sort of uh, computation and end up with this uh, population vector for a year from now. And uh, if you notice that each one of these vectors, the columns of the matrix plus our two vectors here, each one of them sums to one. So they're, they're uh, special vectors uh, because they represent probabilities um, or percentages. And uh, we'll talk about that in a little more in just a minute. But before we get to that, notice that uh, what we have here, this is of the form some matrix, which I'm calling M, times a vector I'll call X naught, which is like the original state of the system, original population. We multiply those together to get x1, which is the state in year 1. We can continue that process to figure out what the population in year 2 would be, year 3, and so forth, year k plus 1. Uh, for any year, it's just uh, m times the population from the previous year. So, for instance, if I wanted to figure out 10 years from now, what's uh, the population, then I could compute x2, which is... Well, to compute x10, I need x9, right, because x10 is m times x9. To get x9, I need x8. To get x8, I need x7, and so forth. So I'd have to compute all those intermediate uh, population vectors. Uh, there is another way to do it, which doesn't require 
uh, that computation, um, and that is to look at it as I have here at the bottom. Uh, if we look at x2, for example, that's m times x1, but we know that x1 is m times x0, so x2 turns out to be m squared times x0. Similarly, x3 is m times x2, but we know x2 is m squared x0, so x3 is just m cubed times x0. And in general, we have xk, your k, uh, population would be m to the k times the original population vector. Okay, so a vector with non-negative entries that add up to 1 is called a probability vector. So back to, to these, um, all these are probability vectors because they all add up to 1. Each column adds up to 1. Okay, a stochastic matrix is a square matrix whose columns are probability vectors. So the matrix that we had here, that is a stochastic matrix because each of its columns is a probability vector, a vector where their entries are non-negative and they sum to 1. A Markov chain is a sequence of probability vectors, x0, x1, x2, and so forth, together with a stochastic matrix M such that x sub k plus 1 is just m times x sub k, right, which is the pattern that we had in our example. Um, the ith entry in xk is the probability that the system is in state i at time k, okay? Um, and we call xk a state vector because it represents the state of the system at time k. Okay, now an interesting question related to our, pop, our population example is, will there ever be a point at which there's no net population change? That is, the number of people moving to the suburbs is equal to the number of people moving to the city. Okay, another way to look at it is, will there ever be a point at which xk plus 1 is equal to xk? All right, so you compute xk plus 1, um, and uh, it's the same as xk. Or will there ever be a point at which you have your current state is some vector x, you apply the transition matrix M to it, and you end up back with the same vector x. Okay, and so this is the system we want to look at. Um, it's similar to systems that we know how to solve, but it's a little bit different because on the right-hand side here, we've got a, a variable. It's not a constant. Um, so it's not like an AX equals B system. Um, so we need to uh, manipulate it a bit before we can uh, use the things that we know about uh, solving systems. Okay, so we want to know, is it consistent? And the way we determine that is uh, if we bring the x over to the left-hand side, we get uh, mx minus x is a zero vector. And then the key is to factor out that x. And if we factor out the x, then we're left with m minus the identity matrix. So i here is the identity matrix. So what we end up with is some matrix, which is m minus the identity matrix, which we can compute directly. We know both of those. Times x, which we don't know, equals a zero vector. So when we write it in this form here, it's a simple homogeneous system. Now clearly it's consistent because uh, x could be the zero vector and, and uh, that uh, obviously makes that consistent. However, that's not a very interesting case. So what we really want to know is, um, does this system have uh, an infinite number of solutions? Uh, are there any free variables? All right, well, if we look at this uh, matrix for our example, uh, all right, so we subtract off the identity, and we're left with this one. And it's clear when you look at that that the columns are not linearly independent, and therefore you have a free variable. So if we solve this system, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, one row operation, and we've zeroed out uh, the bottom row. And um, so first row tells us that 5 multiplying through by a a hundred makes life simple. So we get five X one equals three X two. So that means X one is three fifths times X two, where X two is a free variable. And um, to get 
the actual vector that uh, the probability vector that corresponds to um, this um, relationship between x1 and x2, uh, we want x1 plus x2 to equal a million, or we could say 1. Um, I'm doing it just for raw population numbers. Um, and x1 is 3 fifths x2, so we get this equation. Putting these two together, 8 fifths x2 is a million which says x2 is uh, 625,000, and therefore x1 is 375,000. All right, so um, we've reached the point here at uh, that the number moving out of the city is uh, 0.05 times 375,000, right? So because five, every year 5% 5 leave the city, so the population of the city at this point is 375,000. So 5% of that is 18,750. Likewise, the total moving out of the suburbs, which is 3% of the suburb population, which at this point is 625,000, is also equal to 18,750. So we've reached the point here where the number moving out of the city is equal to the number moving in. So there's no net population change once the system gets to this point. All right, um, a little more terminology for you. If P is a stochastic matrix, then a steady state vector, also called equilibrium vector, for P is a probability vector Q such that P times Q is equal to Q. Right? Before we said M times X equals X, Talking about the same thing here. All right, we have this theorem that says if P is uh, a stochastic matrix, then it has a unique steady state vector. Okay, and it, it, even though the system has an infinite number of solutions, if we require that the uh, elements sum to one, then that makes it a unique uh, vector. Okay, furthermore, um, if x0 is any initial state and we have x to the k plus x sub k plus 1 equals p times x sub k, then uh, the Markov chain converges to q as k goes to infinity. So what's interesting about this is that uh, the initial state is unimportant. It says if x0 is any initial state, um, then the Markov chain will converge to this steady state vector as uh, if you go, go to a big enough K. Okay, so let's look at another example. Here's a matrix, uh, let's get a 3 by 3, um, and find the steady state vector for this matrix. So we need to compute P minus the identity, so there's that. And then we need to solve P minus I times X equals 0. So do a few row operations, end up with this matrix. And uh, so the solution is x1 is x3, x2 is a half of x3, where x3 is free. So back you can see x1 equals x3, x2 is a half of x3, and x3 is free. And again, uh, the elements need to sum to 1. So uh, we get, uh, since x1 is x3, x2 is a half of x3. That's where this second equation comes from. And uh, it turns out that x3 has to be 2 fifths. So that means x1 is 2 fifths and x2 is 1 fifth. So the steady state vector is this one here. And if you check out uh, what p times x is, multiply p times the steady state vector, turns out you get uh, that steady state vector back. So it checks out. All right, I want to show you one more uh, application problem, and this one I've taken from another book, a uh, book by Andrilli and Hecker. It's kind of an interesting one, I thought. And it's based on banks. I uh, say, suppose you're, you've got three banks in a certain town that compete for uh, business. And uh, Bank A right now has 40% of the customers, B has 10%, and C has 50%. So we write that uh, vector as uh, given here, 0.4 corresponds to bank A, 0.1 for bank B and C with a 0.5. Okay, so the banks are obviously trying to um, woo customers from the other banks. 
And um, what we have here is uh, um, information about how successful they are at that. So we see that records show that each year Bank A keeps half of its uh, investors with the remainder switching equally to B and C. So if you look at the first column of this matrix, that uh, is, you can think of this column as being related to Bank A. Um, and each row, uh, uh, the row, first row corresponds to Bank A, the second row to B, and the third row to C. So got an A column, a B column, a C column, and an A row, a B row, and a C row. So the, the point five here uh, represents the probability that a person at bank A is going to stay at bank A. Then the point two, uh, point two five here, represents the probability that a person at bank A is going to switch to bank B. And the point two five at the bottom represents the probability a person currently at bank A is going to switch to bank C. All right, and it says Bank B keeps two-thirds of its investors with the remainder switching equally to the other two. So the point six six seven, that's the probability that someone who, who starts at Bank B or who's currently at Bank B is going to stay there um, for the next year. And then uh, the point one six seven here, that's the probability someone who currently is at Bank B switches to Bank A. Okay, and same thing down here. Somebody at Bank a probability that a bank B customer will switch to bank C. Uh, then we say uh, bank C keeps half of its investors and the remainder switching equally the other two. So the point five here is probability that customer at bank C stays at bank C. And these point two fives here, probability that somebody at bank C switches to A here and switches to B here. Okay, so this is what we call our transition matrix. Um, and as I said, the IJth entry represents the fraction of current investors going from bank J to bank I. Okay, so um, we think of, again, if you think of this as uh, labeled uh, columns ABC, rows ABC. Um, the entry, a particular entry represents person switching from whatever column they're in to whatever row. Uh, that value is. All right, to find uh, the uh, distribution of investors after one year, we take our transition matrix, multiply it by the current state vector, uh, which is this one, and uh, that gives us this vector here. After two years, uh, multiply the transition matrix times the distribution after one year. All right, so just take that one, slot it in here, do that multiplication, and here's um, what we have after two years. And so you can keep doing that for as many years as you're interested in. Um, if you would like to find the steady state vector, then you compute M minus the identity, which gives you this matrix, and then you solve the system M minus I times X equals zero, um, which uh, do some row operations that takes you to this point and uh, so we have uh, x1 equals x3 x2 is equal to, to uh, 1.5 times x3 x3 is free you should always end up with a free variable here because otherwise uh, you have the unique solution which is the zero vector and that's uh, that's an error right? there should always be a free variable alright uh, have the uh, uh, element sum to 1 tells us that x3 is 2 sevenths. And so our steady state vector looks like this. 2 sevenths, 3 sevenths, 2 sevenths. Um, and I didn't actually compute those uh, probabilities. Um, but um, this is the method that you would use.